Hello everyone and welcome to my first tutorial. We are going to make this scene. Let me just show it to you. And loop. So I don't, I'm not sure if you know Star Trek, but um, anyways, we are going to to recreate the shield effect from from Star Trek Discovery. And why is that? Why the shield effect? Because it requires some knowledge about tools and Blender that you generally don't use, like dynamic paint. And and I'm going to show you how to like incorporate that with materials and stuff. Um, sadly, I cannot provide the model since um, well, I I didn't make it. Um, but I I will put the link where you can download it in the description so you can you can follow along yourself with the same model anyway so um, let's get into it let's first take a look at the finished blender file um, and how it all plays out so basically here it starts I have some photon torpedoes here um, I'm going to show you how to make those as well and then they hit um, the ship and it glows blue where they hit basically. That's, that's, what, that's what we're going to do. And if you really look closely, you can see that it's like a second layer on top. Like here you can see. It's like a second layer on top of the ship that's like not part of the hull. Um, I mean, technically you could do it differently as well. Um, you, you could technically also modify the material directly on the hull but um, it doesn't have the same effect as in the show and that's what I'm going for so anyways let's open up a fresh blender file I'm going to import the model and then I'm going to show you how to set this up about the particle systems I'm not going to show you how I did that because um, honestly this tutorial is going to be long enough anyway so I don't want to bother you with that. If you are interested, I will do a follow-up tutorial where um, I will show how I made the compositing and the particle systems and everything. Okay, anyway, let's start a new Blender file. Execute the default cube. Um, and let's first get the model. So um, I already have it, you, I will, you will be able to download it. Um, I have it in a, in, in a blend file, so I will just be able to to import it. Um, oh. Object, and I just need this one. So I got this one, the materials, I'm not sure if they come with it. Yes, they do. I think I just have to set up the textures that, because that won't work. Oh no, the textures also are imported. Very nice, very nice. Good, so it's all loaded in. Let's um, put it into the center of the map, of, of the world, basically. Good, so um, you got the ship. Let's go to material preview first. So we have the ship. Um, here it is. And this ship is what, what we are going to use. Um, let me deactivate amb ambient occlusion. We don't need that. And for now, we'll just get rid of screen space reflections as well. Uh, we only need that for rendering finally. So okay, we got this. Now we need to make the shield effect. There are different ways to do it. You could um, just duplicate the ship and scale it out but um, that won't quite work so what I did um, it's a bit complicated but it's pretty it's pretty fast and um, it gives good results um, you could also try to use the remesh modifier but it's pretty unstable and it can crash blender um, more often than not so I'm going to use a different method and first of all with shift a you add a volume empty. So what you then do 
you you go to um, the modifiers, mesh to volume, and then you select the spaceship. Boom. Now you can see you have it, um, and it's let me switch to solid view so you can see the volume better. So you can see it's okay, but it's very low resolution. So I would encourage you to increase that to like a really big number, like 1024, I think is what I did. Um, it's gonna take some time to calculate, but now you can see, now you got like this shell around the ship. Okay, so you, that's what you want, that's what you want. Um, maybe we can go 512, it's already slowing down my PC significantly. Um, 512, that sounds, sounds good. So, next we'll, um, we'll apply that modifier. Oh, can't apply. Anyways, so then we have this. Um, and if we get rid of the ship for a second, we can see we have basically the, the outline of the ship in volume. And now we do the exact same thing. We go um, Shift A and let's add in a cube. And now it doesn't really matter what it is. It's going to get remeshed anyway. And now we do the inverse, we go volume to mesh. <laughs> Seems kind of weird, but then boom, N now you can see what we have here. So it depends how fine you want the shield to be. Um, if we go back to the volume, um, we can change the exterior bandwidth to zero, then it's exactly on the ship, but we don't want that. I find that 0 0.05 is a fairly good compromise. I always like having like a small gap in between the rings. I think it just looks better. But so you can tweak it how you want. I think I'm going to go for 0 0.04 for this one. Perfect. So um, now let's go to the cube again. We can turn on adaptivity, which will basically decimate the mesh. I can go to, to wireframe and show you. Um, the reason I do it this way is um, you need fairly high resolution mesh in order to to get the shield effect to work. But I understand from some computers it could be too much to handle. So what I would just recommend you go adaptivity, maybe not 50%, but 10% um, maybe. I think that's, that's a good compromise. And then you've significantly reduced um, the the vertices, which is good. So um, I'm not sure what I will choose right now because, yeah, let's go 0 0.01. Perfect. We got that. And now if we go back to solid view, you can see it basically looks exactly the same, but it has less meshes. What we can do now, we can apply it. We can delete the volume. And that is going to be our shield, basically. But I also did what you can do is you can apply a decimate modifier. Um, that's why I recommend not really putting adaptivity very high because um, now you can go to, to decimate 0.5 and if you choose wireframe, you can see it really, it, it does a decent job. But in the end, you're not going to see many of it. So uh, I'm just gonna go 0.75, so 75% decimation. And because again, you do, want to keep a certain amount of um, vertices there for the dynamic paint effect to work correctly. Good. So now apply. And let's name this um, USS Discovery. Shield. Good. So um, now we got the shield, it has a lot of vertices, but that's okay. Um, so now we got to make the material. Um, also, I can re-enable the ship and just check if nothing is clipping, but nothing is clipping, which is exactly what we want. Now let's set up the material. Um, let's make a new material, call it shield. And first of all, you want to get rid of the principal BSDF. You get a mix shader node, and then you get a mission shader. And you get a transparent shader. Transparent, make sure it's set to 100% white, else it won't work properly. Emission, choose the color of a shield, put the strength to 15, 
plug it in, plug this in. And we go to material preview, we can see it's, um, it's glowing. <laughs> so um, now, let's continue. Let's now um, add up, oh, let's add shift A, and let's add um, checkered. No, yeah, checker texture, I think. No, wrong. Brick texture, that's the one. Brick texture. And let's plug this one. Let's just preview it. Um, you can do that by pressing control and shift. If you have the node wrangler add on, um, if you don't have it, I would highly recommend you to get it. Um, there are plenty of tutorials where, or sites where you can learn how to enable it. Um, but I'm just gonna expect you have it. If you preview it, you can see the brick. So um, that's okay, but it's not really very good because um, we we don't. It's not gonna work very well in in three dimensions since brick is really a two dimensional effect. So what we are going to do, we press Control T, that will automatically the nodes that's also from the, the, the node wrangler add-on and we're going to choose uv so now you see nothing is happening no problem we go at the top we go to uv editing we select the mesh everything a and then we press u smart uv project 66 degrees is fine and press ok it's going to basically figure out an efficient uv map um, for the ship for this. So you can see it's a bit weird. Um, so let me maybe go a bit down to 60 degrees. So it um, uses the space a bit more efficiently, I hope. Yeah, maybe this is better, I think. Good, so now if you go back to default, now you can see we got our UVs. It, it looks a bit janky, but you won't really notice afterwards. So um, it's fine, it's fine. Um, good, so, so next. Um, First, we want to to make the bricks in like a, a checker pattern. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to change the offset to zero. Then we are going to make the width on the both bricks to the same. Oh. So 0 0.1 maybe, and 0 0.1. Now we have the grid. Now we're going to change both of these values to white. And the, the mortar completely black. Perfect. So now we got the checker one. Now we can actually like change the smoothness. I always like to put it actually pretty high, not, not 5.5. Yeah. And in decrease the size to 0 0.01 or something. Yeah. Now you can just mess around with the scale. And I would just recommend decreasing the scale significantly. And now you can see how it's all coming together and, and, and it doesn't look as janky anymore. So, we got the brick texture. Now let's look at how it looks basically at the end. So we plug it into the mix shader node and in the factor. And you can see it looks kind of like a, like a shield a bit, but it's a bit too regular. Also on the other node, you can notice you can't really see the, the other ship through. And that's because you're also, if you're rendering with EV, which I'm doing, um, you have to change the blend mode to alpha blend or alpha hashed. I like alpha blend. It's usually um, just as good as alpha hashed, um, but has less noise. And then since you don't want shadows, you turn shadows to none. Good. Also, you don't need screen space ref reflect, uh, reflections or refraction for this. You can, now you can see that the ship is kind of going through. You can, if I am... If I decrease the emission strength, you can see how, yeah, it's there. Good, so um, let's go back to 15. Now, we want a bit more variation. How do we do that? Um, we add a second texture, a magic texture. So shift A, search magic texture. Get it in here. Take the same vector from UV, and let's just first preview it. And we got to definitely increase the scale. Now, what we are going to do is we are going to get a vector math, oh, vec, vector math node. And we're going to plug it in between the brick and the 
the mapping node. And we're going to do some calculations with the, with the vectors together so that we kind of distort everything. And now you can see it's very strongly distorted. We don't want such a strong distortion. So what we can do is we are going to duplicate the vector map node. So shift D and we are going to multiply um, or we can actually use scale and we just have a single value and we're going to decrease the scale to some very small value because we don't want too much distortion. Now we're going to um, increase the depth because it looks a bit too repetitive, in my opinion. And we can actually increase the scale. You can just tweak this around until it looks good for you. And maybe decrease the distortion, increase the distortion. However you may please. Also, it looks kind of repetitive now. Um, basically, you can, you just have to maybe increase the scale even more and distortion a bit, a bit more and now you you won't really notice anymore um maybe decrease the, the depth yeah looks okay looks okay fine so now we got that we got the shield now next step would be dynamic paint i'm going to walk you through it slowly because most people don't really work with dynamic paint since it's um applications are very niche but sometimes you really need it for example, in this example. So let's um, go, let's select the shield and let's go to the physics tab and let's add dynamic paint. Click here. We want a canvas because we want to draw on the shield. And so we press um, add canvas and we select canvas here, canvas. Um, frame, we can do that right now. Um, like this, let's um, open the timeline. We're just going from zero to 250 or from one to 250. I, I'd encourage you to increase the, the sub steps for to like one or two, because right now it doesn't make a difference. But if we're um, using the photon torpedoes, then they will move so fast that they sometimes they don't register on dynamic paint. Anyway, let's get back to the shader editor. And now, there, there is a possibility of um, doing it with image sequence, but that is always very complicated and it can break. I tried it and it broke. So um, yeah, we're going to do it with, with vertex C's, with um, vertex paint. That's why we need a lot of geometry. Let's hope that's enough. Anyways. Um, also, you can notice that you can't really see the shield borders anymore, um, which is exactly what we want. So next, let's set the values. So we want it to, we don't want it to dry, we want it to, to dissolve. So the, the shield effect just pops in and then dissolves back out. I found the value 50 and slow ticked off to be good. Now we need a brush. Let's shift A and let's just, um, I guess, uh, anything could work really, but I'm just going to put an icosphere in, scale it up a bit. And now, so we can see through, we're going to go to here, object, and then visibility, not here, viewport display. And let's display as wire. Now we can see through, that's what we want. Um, so then we go here and we go dynamic paint again on this object, but then we select brush and we add a brush. We, we set the paint color to complete white. So no color, just white. Then that's basically it. We're going to not do anything more here. That's all we have to do. And we are going to select for the brush collection, collection, so our, our collection. One. So um, now we need to define an output because of course we have the data, we have to put it somewhere. So we are going to output it to vertex colors. So we are going to, we, had, we don't have any vertex color layers, but now we add one color it's called. I'll just keep that name because it's easier. And now let's get the brick texture down. 
and let's add another math node in between so we can change the intensity. So what math node do we use? We use the multiply in math node. So we put it in. We don't use add. But this has this has a weird effect. Not gonna lie. Whoa. Ha. <laughs> really strange. Anyway, let's. We don't want add. We want multiply. So um, boom. multiply. We multiply by zero point five. Um, that should technically decrease it. I'm not sure. Um. Um, so we want zero to be the transparent shader. So we need to switch those around. And then we're also going to have to invert the colors on the brick so it matches. I multiply by one, it looks perfect, and we can decrease the intensity by, yeah, exactly, by multiply by changing this multiply value. So, next step. Um, next step is very easy. We get, we go shift A, and we go vertex color. This already a node we select color and the color you can see it's uh, you can already see it's painted white where the icosphere is so basically we just have to plug this in into the multiplier here and if we then preview the shader we can see that anywhere this is it's also multiplied and um, you can see it looks kind of weird that's because um viewport denoising is on you can simply disable it um, here and then, um, oh, I don't, know. I don't know, but as you can see, it's working. <laughs> um, if, if we play, you are able to like paint on it and, and you can see that it does dissolve. That's what we want. Good, so um, we got the dynamic paint working. Um, that's what we want, that's perfect. So now what do we do? Um, we need to make the photo torpedoes because that's anything, everything gets left. Um, so we can hide the icosphere, you don't need it anymore. Um, yeah, okay. Now you can see it kind of just dissolves away. Or doesn't it? I guess it's still uh, affecting if it's... Um... No, now it's gone. Good, so uh, we got the shield. Um, next step would be the photon torpedoes. That's actually very simple. So we add an icosphere, we go shift A, mesh, and we need a icosphere. We're going to change this, the subdivisions to just one subdivision. And let's, let's get that one out of the way. So we need the subdivision of one. That's Fine, now let's move it somewhere else. And the photon torpedo, I'm not sure if you know how it looks, but it has like a very spiky shape, tri triangular spikes. So good, let's um, go, let's move this one upwards. I'm just gonna just move that one upwards and let's, uh, let's choose normal. And let's move that one downwards and that one too. Now it's a bit uneven, I know, uh, because we have like this weird thing going. But um, what I'm going to do in this case, I'm just going to subdivide it. And we're going to just um, select this face and just drag it out basically. Something like this. And I want to avoid any triangulation errors, we should just add in a face like that. Doesn't look perfect, but as you will see, it actually um, does work just fine. Now, last step, we can, with Alt, holding Alt and clicking, you are 
supposed to make um, a circle selection, but apparently that doesn't work. Um, let's increase that one in size. Okay. So that is a fine looking photon torpedo. Um, so we may, may just have to scale it down a bit. Since, and also that origin, geometry to origin. Then what we also have to do, that's gonna come in handy for later, is we're going to go Shift A, while we're in edit mode, that's important, while we're in edit mode, we add another icosphere, and we're just gonna have to move this one, um, yeah. Control L to, to select everything that's linked, everything that's part of the object, and we just have to move it, um, into here. You're already asking why, I know, but it's gonna be useful. So just wait, wait for it, basically. Good, put it in the middle and scale it down a bit. So now we can't really see it through, but that's fine. Um, so now we are going to have to define the materials for the photon torpedo. Photon torpedo needs two materials. So we need the Torpedo, torpedo material, and we need the hull or the, the collider. It's called collider. Collider material. Collider material is going to be really simple. Just a transparent shader with all white. So if we go here, it's going to be. Uh, let's also turn the shadow mode. Uh, we can make shadows, but alpha blend definitely and shadows alpha clip actually we can use alpha clip for this one too and for a torpedo we are simply going to have an emission shader and we're going to put it to red and the strength to something like 200 like really strong also while you're at it decrease the bloom strength because we are going to add, or I, in, in my case, added something in compositing. Again, this is what I will do in the next tutorial, but um, it's kind of annoying when the bloom is so intense. So let's turn it down to 0 0.01, the, the intensity. Um, good, so now we have a glowing ball, um, but trust me, it's gonna be worth it. So control L, we're going to select link. That means we're going to select all the balls around. And let's make a new vertex group for later and call it collider. And let's go in. Let's select the photon torpedo itself. Control L. Make a new one and torpedo. And also, I forgot to click assign, but I, sometimes it does assign automatically. So. I have to still assign it, so assign, and now exactly, you can see, it's working. Perfect. So next step is we're going to control L, and we're going to go to materials, and we are going to assign this material to this one. So now you can see we have the photon torpedo in a transparent shell. And that's going to come in, come in handy because torpedo itself is too small in a lot of cases to create a dynamic paint. And that's why we have the collider because it will um, create dynamic paint and it is big enough. So we got a photon torpedo, that's all we need basically. So let's um, give it a nice name like photon torpedo. And now, now we also, that's one thing that's left to do, is we are going to have to give it a brush in the canvas. So we're going to dynamic paint and we select brush, add brush, and we're going to paint white. And that's basically it. So um, now, if, I'm, if I play this uh, now, and it's, gonna, it's a bit laggy, I know, but um, we're going to cache the simulation. Now anyways, you can see that it does exactly what it's supposed to do. So I think 
the, the time it, it's on it's on there it's a bit too long so i'm going to turn it down to like 15 something like that so now i can see it's working perfectly like you wanted now another n nice effect that's also possible in the canvas is making it spread so effects and then spread so that's just making it spread so now um it's kind of spreading and then disappearing you can configure this um, how you like um i feel that for that effect i like like 0.75 so And you might now think that it's disappearing a bit too quickly. And that is fine because there's another effect we're going to use. And that's called shrink. So let's enable shrink and now let's see. Now it's a bit smoother. Not perfect. Again, it's um you can you can configure it to your liking. Um it it has a lot of possibilities. Now you can see it. It's really nice. Maybe I'm not even going to keep spread. Maybe I'm just going to keep shrink. Wonderful. So we got this. We got a starship. And now also, um, let me just do one thing here. It, it can save you some render time and performance if for the materials you choose um, backface cutting. Um, again, if you have solid materials um it doesn't make any difference to enable it and it just prevents blender from calculating um yeah it showed back face what is it ah uh, well no, we don't show back face Missile color we don't need we can use back back face calling and for everyone basically we can use it. And now you can see um, it may or may not make a large difference on your machine, but it's always a nice thing and a nice thing you can do, especially in EV. I mean, in instant cycles, it makes no difference, but in EV it does. So, next step would then be to, to have, a, have a few more photon torpedoes than, um, than just this one. And what I recommend you do is you don't duplicate them like uh, with normal duplication, which would be Shift D, but with Alt D. What this does is very simple. It um, creates a duplicate object, but they have the same mesh. So you already have the vertex groups, everything, um, you everything set up, and now we're just going to create a few duplicates. So um, Alt D and Alt D. So if we then later realize that, oh, let's, let's just make three. If we then later realize we made an error, for example, I now realized, I just forgot to animate them. Uh, but anyway, um, if we realize, for example, the, the shell is not big enough, we can edit it on one and we'll change on every one. Um, so one thing it's, that's still missing is normally photon torpedoes, they kind of rotate. Um, so let's make that happen. We're going to click, uh, you're going to click, um, right click on the rotation and add a driver. You're basically just going to, um, into the expression, you're going to write frame, oh, frame times some value. I choose 0 0.25, something like that. And, and then here again, add driver frame times 0 0.25, oh, not plus, times. And here again, add driver, frame times 0 0.25. So, fine. Um, Now it should technically update. I'm not really sure what's the problem. 
Um, I must say I'm slightly confused. It did work before. Error, invalid flight. Ah, we have to just remove. Let's just add the drivers. Error, invalid Python expression. I'm just, ah, I'm, to be honest. Um, let's remove the variables because we don't need them. But for some reason, it doesn't update them every frame. So let's same times because if we do update them. Manually, then it does work. Ah, oh, no, now it works. I don't know what was the problem to be honest. So now you you can kind of adjust how fast you want it to rotate. So you can, for example, say it should rotate faster on the x-axis, on the y-axis. I don't know. I think zero point two is fairly good, or like this. So now we got a rotating photon torpedo. That's what we need. Now we're going to create some duplicates of it. Alt D. Let's make three. I don't want to waste too much time. Let's leave this icosphere. And since we know it's going to cause um, the shield effect to appear, let's just animate them. So I'm going to move them uh, farther away out of the out of view. And now let's go to zero, basically. Maybe start at frame 10. It's I and use location. And then we we'll just animate them individually. So we'll go, let's say, after I don't know. Sometime 80, 80 frames. This thing does impact um, here. So let's just say it impacts one of the nacelles, just like in my animation. Okay. We might still want to decrease the size. So let's go A and S. And now you can see the big advantage of having them linked because you can see the size on all of them changed. Um, so let's focus on that. And let's say at frame 80, it has to be inside the nacelle. Don't worry too much about where exactly it is. To fix it later. And let's add another keyframe. And now let's look at the animation. It's flying in. And you can see the shield effect is there. Wonderful. That's all we need, basically. And well, what we can do to basically enhance it a bit is maybe yeah, just the shell and increase the size a bit so so it does have a bigger effect on dynamic paint. Good. <clears throat> and let's do that the same thing for all the other torpedoes. So let's now select this one and I let's it. Um, ah, we already made a keyframe, so fine. Now let's hit the second one at frame 70. Let's hit this one on the saucer, on, on the ring. Let's hit this one exactly there. And we want to hit it here. That's a good point for hitting. Okay, perfect. Move it a bit in. And let's go I, location. Same thing for the last one. Uh, let's say at frame 60. And let's move this one there. And let's let it impact here. Let's hit I again and location. So now you can see if I, I just go to end to 100. Um, you can see they fly in. Wonderful. Now I think you might realize they kind of slow down um, just before they hit, which is not exactly what we want. So let's select the keyframe in the timeline and let's go interpolation mode linear. And the same thing for those. Like the last keyframe, interpolation mode linear. And here as well, interpolation mode linear. <coughs> Good, so now you can see they don't slow down and they just 
basically stop in place after the hit. So that's good. Now, um, the shield effect is not quite bright enough for my taste, to be honest. So I'm going to um, edit a bit. Um, I'm going to, to go back to the shader editor. What I'm going to do, I'm going to increase the color of the mortar. I'm going to decrease the brightness of the mortar a bit. So it becomes a bit um, It kind of glows everywhere, that's the point, isn't it? Ah, yes, exactly. Here, I'm going to increase these to slightly different values. Like this. And now we got a bit more action going on. Let's select 20 from the brightness of 25. So it glows a bit. And maybe we can increase the bloom slightly. slightly. So now we got our shield effect. Um, that's basically all there is to it. Um, we're just gonna set up um, a nice lighting now in rendered view. Oh yes, one thing I forgot. We got the photon torpedoes, of course, and they disappear after they hit. So um, let's do that real quick. Um, so start with this photon torpedo and let's, where does it hit? Here, here it hits. So let's add um, well, let's say it's when it's inside here. Let's press I and scale, and then on the hit, we go scale zero, so we press S and then zero, and then we go again I scale. So now you can see if it, if it hits, it disappears, and also the dynamic paint stops. And for the same thing for those, we go. We look at when it really goes in, like here, for example. Let's um, go I scale, go to 70 when it's inside, and let's go S0 and I scale. Now for the last torpedo that's missing, here this one. Let's take this one and let's look at when this one really enters here. Let's go I scale, go to hit, and S zero, I scale. And now this one should also disappear. So you can see we have a really nice effect um, that does work um, very nicely. Let me just, I mean, I'm, I can increase the bloom a bit more. Let's, let's go back to the default. We're going to be far away from when the camera is anyway. So now we're just going to add a camera. So shift A and camera. Done. Select a nice viewpoint. I think I select this one, but you can choose any one if you want. Any viewpoint. It will be very close. Let's, let's try this. Let's go Control, Alt, and Numpad 0. Then you snap the camera to your position. I'm going to move it around a bit like this. And you can click here and camera lens angle, and I'm going to zoom out a bit. Wonderful. So now we get the camera working, and boom, it hits. Works. One thing you can do. That's why I used um, also like. Spread um, in my um, in my original animation was because the impact is kind of not not big enough. So let's uh, let's make it spread one, and it's not going to look as as good when it um, uh, when it hits first. But um, I think it's definitely worth it because it stays out so long. So now, since we don't want to recalculate that every time, let's um, get the first impact of the torpedo, which is. This one, which is going to happen right around this frame. And let's set the start to frame 51. So then we have to simulate this. And let's 
and the last one disappears. Yeah, basically at frame 100. So let's go frame 100, where the last one disappears. And let's see if the simulation checks out. It does check out. Wonderful. And let's bake it. So let's go to cache. And oh, that's, I didn't even save the blender file. So let's just, um, yeah, let's just save it here. Energy shield to tutorial. Wonderful. Save Blender file and now let's bake the cache. So bake now. And now it's it, it it's it doesn't take that that much computational power. Done. So now let's switch to rendered and we gotta turn the background strength to zero and you can see there's not much to see. Um, I don't have the SSGI add-on, else it would look, I think, a lot better, but um, I am going to experiment with that some time later. So we need some light. Um, thankfully, that's not that difficult, so let's go Shift A. I love area lamps, so let's add uh, area lamp, light area, G, Z to move up, scale up, and G, Z a bit further and then we go to light strength and we select five kilowatts basically and maybe a bit less maybe two kilowatts yeah i really have to try to render this with the ssgi add-on if you do um that would be really cool um 1.5 kilowatts i don't want it to be too bright you know i don't know 15 haha <laughs> 1.5 this looks very nice and now we have basically done with our animation and you have your nice little shield animation with Star Trek style. So yeah, um, that was a tutorial. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. And, and in the next video, I'll show you how to, how to set up the compositing. So anyway, um, thanks for watching. Um, Please subscribe and, and like the video if, if you liked it and subscribe if you want to see more tutorials like this. And until then, have a nice day.